What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Cassie and you're watching The Victorian Thimble. Today on Thimble Talk Thursday, episode number five, we're gonna talk about the history of Luna's story of her friends. So if you guys recall, I got this book for Christmas and this is a picture of all the animals that I'm gonna eventually be sewing. So far we have Miss Luna Lappin right back there behind us. And this is Clementine the cat, Wilhelmina the country mouse, Reynard the fox, and Freddy the badger. Have you ever wondered what the stories are behind Luna Lappin and her friends? I decided that since I'm spending so much time sewing these projects, it might be fun to look at what the characters are all about. And just a quick moment to ask you to support the channel. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button and comment down below which animal you'd like me to make next. Your support of the channel really helps it grow. Thanks guys. And so we'll begin with looking at the star of the show herself, Luna Lapin the Rabbit. In the book, Luna is described as a rabbity hare that learns to sew on her grandmother's sewing machine. Granny's house had a collection of books and fabrics and buttons and every sort of haberdashery a sewist could want to hope to use. Granny had beautiful cottons from faraway lands, saved trims of ribbon and lace, everything to make beautiful garments. One day, Granny offered to let Luna learn how to sew, and Luna said yes. Granny had one of those awesome old antique sewing machines that was black all over with a little rose design on the front of it. And in just an afternoon, Granny was able to turn out a beautiful dress. As the story goes, Luna thought this was so beautiful that she decided she would love to be a fashion designer herself one day. All the other little snippets of stories in the book follow that with Luna's enjoyment of fashion, she found herself at different places and different events, and they all along the way built new friendships that she could enjoy for many years to come. Let's take a look at the friends. And now we'll take a look at Reynard the Fox. This is such a delightful little story about this little fox. Reynard the fox came from what we like to call good stock. You know that saying about a man's man? Well, there was an equal saying in the fox world about a fox's fox. And Reynard's father, Ralph Reynard Sr., was known as a fox's fox. So, his father had all the attributes that a fox should have. He was bright. He had a bushy red tail, was agile and resourceful, and downright handsome. With so many fine attributes, he did tend to be quite proud, and sometimes he seemed kind of haughty. So fast forward, and Reynard inherited his father's good looks and his intelligent mind. But Reynard didn't like to just run and play like other young foxes. He much preferred to sit in his den and draw pictures of new fashion designs to wear. One day, as the story has it, Reynard's father took off his jacket and handed it to Reynard and said, Son, this is the finest thing I own. I think it's time for you to have it. His father's jacket had the look of himself, a little bit stern and proper, but very fine indeed. So as the story goes, Reynard loved this jacket and he calls it his lucky jacket and wears it to this day. Now the most recent good luck event that the jacket brought Reynard was when he was at a restaurant and one of the buttons popped off the jacket. Reynard was desperate to retrieve this button. He actually ended up dressed up like a waiter, standing on the other side of the restaurant, pretending to be a waiter so that he could try and search around where everyone was sitting looking for this button. As you can see where this is going, a slip and a fall later, Reynard spilt drinks all over the place and had to come clean to everyone at the restaurant and explain that he wasn't actually part of the wait staff. He's just a guy looking for the button to his heirloom coat. The amazing end to this little story for him is that the button was found, but so was this discovery of Miss May Loveday 
stylist to the stars. This was such great luck for Raynor because he was a fashion designer and she was a stylist to the stars. And you know what ended up happening? They planned a photo shoot for Persephone. You'll have to read on a little further or listen on a little further to see what happens next. And now a word about Freddy the Badger. I like to think of Freddy as quiet country folk. He's thrived on simple things in life. He mostly preferred clean fresh air, dark nutritious soil, and the rolling hills of his farmland. This badger was the, was the type of fellow who had his own farm. Most badgers like to have personal space and plenty of room to forage. Our Freddy here enjoyed growing foods and trading them with others for their food items and other things as well. He kept his farm neat and trim, just like he kept himself. Imagine his surprise when one day Raynard called him and asked if he could borrow the farm for a photo shoot. Freddy felt honored to be able to share his space. He had a quiet dignity about himself. And with that same quiet dignity that he had, Freddy polished up his already neat and orderly farm until it nearly shined like a jewel. As the story goes, Freddy was pretty mesmerized to watch a real star stand at his farm and get all ready for a photo shoot. She really was a beauty with shiny white hair, glossy black eyes and a lustrous black nose. She was the handsomest, most beautiful, elegant poodle that Freddie had ever seen. Her name was Persephone. So as the story goes, the troubleshoot was going well until a branch gave way that caused Persephone to lose her footing and fall into the duck pond. Poor Persephone. So Luna watched as Freddie went over to the pond to rescue this drenched little pup. She decided to act quickly and took photos of this moment as Mr. Freddie gallantly rescues Persephone from the pond. Both Freddy and Luna took a negative situation and turned it into a positive. And I think we all know, deep down inside, Freddy is a gentleman at heart. Winnie the Wood Mouse. So a word about Winnie. She's pretty much what you would expect a wood mouse to be. She was petite, she had bright beady eyes, and a shiny nose and soft silky fur. Her full name was Winifred, but everyone calls her Winnie. She's filled with kindness and her face was expressive. She would be expressive with whiskers that would stand on end if she was afraid or surprised, but all the same if she sensed danger, she was agile and quick and she could dart away at a moment's notice. Winnie also happened to be Luna's best friend. These two grew up together and have known each other most of their lives. They've enjoyed many a fine day playing together at the seaside and doing all the things that come with the seaside. So on this particular day, when Luna and Winnie were walking and talking along the seaside, they walked and walked along the path until they stumbled onto this old beach park where there were some tea shops and ice cream shops and ivy growing over the empty window displays there was so much evidence of life that used to be lived here and wasn't anymore. As the story goes, Winnie was sighing and pondering about what would it be like if this place could be restored and families can come make memories here again. Both Luna and Winnie loved the thought of this and suddenly Luna had this great idea. Through her photography and fashion design, she's met a lot of people, some of them in high places such as the woman who's the designer to the stars. Luna thought that with the help of the community, they could work together and restore the park. Luna and Winnie decided that together, they were gonna work to restore this park to life again. So not only are they the best of friends, they make the best of memories together too. And now a look at Clementine the cat. Clementine was a beautiful and regal cat with blazing orange fur and brilliantly white tipped ears and tufts. 
this cat look like a star every day. You could call her a fashionista among the highest of fashions. This cat wore everything with elegance and style. Success seems to follow her wherever she goes, and designers and photographers seek this cat out with the hopes of working with her. So as this snippet of the story goes, one day Luna saw an advertisement in a magazine for the best fashion design of the year. Luna very much wanted to win this, and she mustered up the courage and appro approached Miss Clementine and asked if she could have the honor of an exclusive design for the annual fashion design contest. I'm sure you can imagine Luna was elated when Miss Clementine said yes. Luna designed a show-stopping piece, a gown that was almost like a living, moving flower. It really did seem quite right for such a regal cat. The bodice was a soft floral print. It seemed to wave softly whenever the wearer moved. The skirt was comprised of layers of tulle that had a series of colors so layered that the final effect was like a silky flower petal in all its beauty. The skirt swishes when you walk and it gives the effect as if the flower petals are rustling in the breeze. The gown was finally finished with a deep cranberry velvet ribbon. It was quite the luxurious piece. So with another great friendship formed, Luna also won this fashion design contest. And she was very happy that she took the time to make the new friend, friend and try out a special design. And then imagine that she won. As the story says, Luna really felt like a star. And so that is Clementine, the elegant, regal kitty cat. Luna Lappin is such a sweet and kind bunny, and she makes life sweeter for everyone she meets, don't you think? I've really enjoyed hearing these little stories from the book because it does paint a little picture of this creative life that Luna Lappin the bunny has. She has a wonderful community of friends who have a lot of shared interests with her and together they're making wonderful memories. I'm also including an Amazon link in the link down below where you can purchase the book. I'm not affiliated with these people in any way. I just enjoy this little project book and I thought that you might too. And the best ways that we can credit and support the author is to buy her book. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey as we make Luna Lappin and her friends. Take care guys, see you next time. Bye.